Microtransactions are the freaking devil. Can I get a hell yeah? I said give me a hell yeah! Uh, Alright, I actually settle down. It's a bit trickier than that. Microtransactions are one of the deadly sins of modern gaming. Like on-disc DLC and the GameStop credit card, they're generally regarded by gamers as a way to gut your fans for more money while delivering an often inferior product. But why do we see it that way? Well, because 90% of the time it's true, or at least it feels like that. When you mention microtransactions, the absolute worst examples come to mind first. The iPhone games, the stupid pay-to-win point system and Bravely Default. They've come to represent a game that constantly bleeds you for small amounts of cash at a time to even play the game. The game might start off free, sure, but if we took all that money spent on microtransactions and put it into something useful, we probably wouldn't have cancer. But even though there are absolutely awful examples of DLC, there are also great examples. Games like The Sims stay interesting for years after their release as more content is developed. Sometimes DLC is even free, like the Joker costume for Arkham Asylum or the Mercedes cars in Mario Kart 8, and those are nothing but pure fun. And apparently the Burial at Sea DLC makes Bioshock Infinite somewhat credible. Although, I guess I'll never know, because why would I shovel more money into that piece of trash? So, if there are good ways to do DLC, there has to be a good way to do microtransactions, right? Well, that's a lot murkier. You see, DLC is often brand new content that adds on to an existing game. But microtransactions don't exactly give you new content. They just let you use the stuff that's there. Hence the phrase pay to win or pay to play. For the most part, microtransactions have stuck to purely mobile games, and the few forays into consoles have been pretty heavily spurned. So last year, when Nintendo revealed Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, it was mostly ignored or mocked as further proof of the death of Nintendo. However, since my interests include baseball, dogs, and according to Colby, dying alone, I gave it a shot. And frankly, Nintendo may have hit on a way to make microtransactions compelling. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is a game about baseball, nostalgia, and microtransactions. And really, that last part is interesting when you think about it. When has a game ever actually been about the little payments? I think that's largely why microtransactions are so annoying. 99% of the time, they have absolutely nothing to do with the game you're playing. There are arbitrary fees that intrude on the experience, gating off the content until you pony up. In one popular game, for example, you're a badass mafia warlord. You put in your actions, and then there's nothing you can do. You know, you've gotta wait for everything to recharge, unless you wanna pay the game to give you more actions immediately. Now, how exactly is that supposed to translate into the game world? Is your badass mafia self really worn out after telling your henchmen to go club a guy? Picture a Pac-Man cabinet, but instead of coughing up a quarter every time you lose, you get charged every time you eat 10 pellets. Like, you know, you're, you have to buy Pepto-Bismol to clear up Pac-Man's indigestion. Rusty circumvents all this, and the way they do it is really kinda genius. They built a metagame out of the microtransactions, where the real game is actually about buying all the games from Rusty for as cheap as possible. Each game you buy can be played indefinitely, and has 50 different challenges and two high-score marathons built around a different aspect of baseball. Honestly, the amount of content is quite large. If you're a completionist, you can spend several dozen hours unlocking everything. That's not to say the rewards are particularly enticing. Pictures, costumes, this game is definitely more of a time waster than a full experience. But how does it reach something more substantial? The metagame. I kind of have a hard time calling Rusty's Real Deal Baseball itself a game. It's kind of like a hub through which you access several baseball games. Technically, the fielding, hitting, and umpiring games that you buy are mini-games, but when you think of mini-games, you think of small, inconsequential activities that break up the main action for small bursts of fun. But here, the mini-games are the player's main focus. You spend 90% of your time playing these games, and they each take quite a while to complete. Each game basically has five different takes on the base game. For example, the batting game has you aim at targets or hit disappearing balls, and each of these permutations has five different challenges that increase in difficulty. When you complete enough of the beginning challenges, you unlock an advanced mode where the sub-games are further expanded upon. I spent a few hours each on these games and never completed some of them. You earn various rewards as you play, and all of them are used to make your next game cheaper. The game is literally rewarding you for playing, giving you discounts on future games as you beat more challenges. Now, there's nothing stopping you from buying every game for the full $4, but considering that you can get over 50% off by just playing the actual fun part of the game, there's really no downside for the player. Now, even though the games give you discount tickets for various amounts off the games, the real prizes are the nose hair clippers, or in the cooking class and all the other story items that help you solve Rusty's problems, making him more than willing to give you a better deal in the next game. 
You use these items as bargaining chips as you haggle with Rusty. It helps push the story forward by solving his problems and giving you a little bit more of uh, the background to Rusty. But it also gets you a discount. The actual haggling process is a cute little battle of wits with actual money at stake, but there's no punishment if you lose. So once again, there's really no downside to it. It's not only easy to get discounts, the game's entire design actively encourages you to save money. Which is bizarre, considering every other microtransaction game on the market does the opposite. You know, whereas most games give you a taste of fun for a bit before locking the next bit of fun behind a sometimes increasing price gate, Rusty lets you play the games as long as you've won, with all the rewards included, and makes the games cheaper to buy the further you go. It's a consumer-friendly microtransaction system, which seems like a flat-out paradox. It seems almost self-aware of how distasteful microtransactions are. Even the writing in the game is constantly winking at itself, satirizing the game's industry and painting Rusty as a salesman who's bad at his job because he's actually human. Or, you know, dog. I'd also like to mention, just real quick, how strange it is that Rusty is one of the best written games Nintendo's had in years. I mean, the narrative of this game where a washed up baseball dog tries to sell you minigames so he can support his scores of identical puppies actually tugged at my heartstrings. This, from a company so unconcerned with narrative that Skyward Sword is considered well written for them. Seriously, Rusty's story may be short and simple, but it's shockingly natural and effective. It's the first time I can recall a game like this having a narrative in the first place. Or, you know, at least one that works. Does that make it all worth it? Even if it's better than the average freemium game, does Rusty's Real Deal Baseball actually manage to be a genuinely good experience worth the microtransactions? Sort of. Rusty is far from a must-play. But if you're the kind of gamer who appreciates something to unwind with, you honestly can't go wrong with it. Even if you don't like baseball, the mechanics are simple and the games let you fall into a rhythm that helps you kind of zone out for hours. The sound design is key here. I know there's been a recent wave of understanding in the general public about how important music and sound is when it comes to selling a film or game's world, but Rusty just nails the sound effects. The crack of the bat is so accurate and satisfying, and you really do feel the weight of the ball hitting your glove. I would pay full price for an actual baseball game that does the basics this well. So, for me, a baseball fan who does a lot of his gaming at the end of the day after work or on set, this is well worth it. Especially considering that I spent less than 20 bucks before I was done. And granted, I only got the games that I needed to to finish the story, and I've had plenty of fun with just those. If I ever need more content, there's a handful of extra games that'll be under 3 bucks each after discounts. So, in that sense, there's a lot of content there that I value. You know, that said, this is a casual game, and as such, there's a lot of notes that it doesn't hit. You know, things that I'll need to get from other games. I can't say that Rusty's left an impact on me the way that the gripping narrative of a really well-written RPG has, or that I ever felt the same sense of accomplishment or thrill that I got from some of my favorite action or adventure games like Monster Hunter. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is full of microtransactions. It's a casual game meant to play in short bursts, and it is, for all intents and purposes, pay to play. You know, I don't know how many people this game will appeal to because of that, but even if this game doesn't hit the sweet spot for you, it's hard to deny that it's at least a sign that microtransactions can be used well. If freemium games are gonna be made, I'd much rather that they resemble Rusty than most of the shameless ripoff games that populate smartphones today. Now that Nintendo's heading into the mobile market, I really hope that they continue making games with the same design philosophy of Rusty or perhaps taking it even further. Maybe we can see the birth of an entirely new wave of great games that we actually enjoy paying for gradually. Yeah, but hey, what do I know about good game design? I'm that asshole that complained about Awakening. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This one was a lot of fun to make, actually. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed this one. I've got some other great videos on the way. I've got a brand new show coming, and uh, it should be pretty interesting because most of the work on this next one is actually being done by Miles. Also got another big video on the way that uh, I've been putting a lot of work into, a lot of love, and I'm really excited to see how it comes out. And if you want to see more content like this, uh, me and my friends make a lot of videos for the site called Hammerspace. You can check those out on Facebook, on YouTube, or at its own site, hammerspace.co. Here's some links to other videos on this channel, and uh, here's something from my acting channel. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day.